What's up, Kajudo Masters? Poji Force here. Now, I mentioned in my last video, if you saw it to the end, um, I know our experts probably didn't, but to our new players, um, I said I would be reviewing the new Kaijudo demo decks for 2014. So, here they are. And here they are. We got Light, Water, Dark, Fire, and Nature. 2014 on each of them. So, let's start very quickly with the boxes. Um, I don't remember too much about the old boxes. Um, they were marked with the relative civilization. These ones are unique, though. They have, down here in the corner, the civilization icons. These ones actually tell you that they're dual set. Now, they're the same civ combinations as the previous uh, demo decks. These ones, um, light water, water dark, dark fire, fire nature, and nature light. Again, these are the same civ combinations as the last decks. They're kind of shrink-wrapped with this pull tab here. Um, we're going to start with the light deck, so let's just jump right into it. The deck itself is also shrink-wrapped. It's got the uh, little become a dual master, teach your friends to play. Um, when I opened this up with Taylor in my last video, it was a little poster. I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. It's not a play mat or an actual rule kit, but it is, well it is an actual rule kit. It's a very, this side here is a very basic how to play. And this side is kind of a list of powerful cards from the civilization combinations in each deck. Now again, this is only uh, friendly and allied civs. This is not enemy civ combinations. All right, and now we're gonna open up the deck and lay it out. All right, so what we have here is the light deck, the light civilization deck, with the water section. And as you can see, it only has one dual sieve card, as a three of copy. Um, starting at the top here, two of blade barrier, three halo hawk, three heliosphere, two ion cruiser, which was the cover art for the box, two Lars virtuous imager, three rain cloud kraken, three repulse, one sun whip sentry, three thunder reaper, three aeropica. 3 Aqua Rider, 2 Cyber Lord Kareil, or is it Kareel? I don't know. 3 Cyber Grid Bandit, 1 King Barnacle, 3 Time Rhyme, and 3 Memory Keeper. Now as to how good this deck is, um, Repulse is actually a decent Shield Blast. Blade Barrier is a good spell. Um, altogether though, it has how many blockers? King Barnacle is a blocker, Rain Cloud Kraken is a blocker. And that look like, likes to be, oh, Aeropica is a blocker. So the deck has seven blockers in it. I believe these are only 30 card decks. 5, 8, 10, 15, 18, 19, 22, 25, 28, 29, 32, 34. No, this is a 40 card deck. Um, so these are 40 card decks. Um, there's a lot of small creatures that don't really do anything. You've got Heliosphere. Halo Hawk and Cyber Grid Bandit, they're all just relatively cheap creatures that do nothing. You've got bigger creatures that fall in the same category. You've got Ion Cruiser and that's kind of it. Uh, Sun Whip Sentry and King Barnacle seem to be the big guys for the deck. No, they're, they're both blockers actually. Um, Sun Whip Sentry is also a double breaker whereas King Barnacle has the guard um, keyword and Rain Cloud Crack in here has the Skirmisher keyword, Aeropica, and Sun Whip Sentry has neither have, have neither of those keywords. So it's a good it's a good demonstration of the variety of blockers, because you've got blocker without keyword, you've got blocker with skirmisher, you got blocker with guard. Um Cor Cyberlord Corral helps you set your shield blasts. You've got time rhyme and repulse. Time rhyme's actually not terrible. There's certainly better cards, but it's not terrible. Um, so this is the light water deck here. King Barnacle is not bad. And I was looking through this, and I don't think I saw a single card here that's pre-clash, and that's going to be important. So, moving on to the next deck. And here we have the water deck, which has a darkness section in it. We got, again, three Aeropica. 2 Angler Cluster, 3 Aqua Rider, 3 Bladefish, 3 Cybergrid Bandit, 1 King Barnacle, 
two Reef Scout, three Time Run, three Cave Gulper, three Chimera Predator, two Dagger Doll, three Dread Husk, two Fanged Horror, three Ghost Bite, one Ravenous Web Leg, and down there our dual sib for the deck is Cryptic Worm. Now, there's a lot of cards here that are common across this and the light deck. We've got the three Europica, we've got the three Time Ryan, and the one King Barnacle, as well as three Cybergrid Bandit. I think Aqua Rider was also in the previous deck, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, new to this deck, we got Bladefish, Angler Cluster, and Reef Scout. Reef Scout is kind of nice because he's a blocker, and... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> he's a blocker that draws you a card when he comes into play. Um... Into our darkness section, we've got Cave Gulper, which lets when it dies, it draws you a card. Um, we've got a Slayer and Dagger Doll. And then we've just got a ridiculously big thing in Fanged Horror. Ghost Bite's actually a, a decent shield blast. It banishes one creature power 3,000 or less, essentially, or reduces a creature's power by 3,000. Um, it makes it better because it's reduced power as well. It makes it better than... Make sure I'm... Yeah, by 3,000 power until the end of the turn. It makes it better than Rock Bite in that respect because Rock Bite can only banish a creature power 3,000 or less, whereas Ghost Bite can. I never made that connection before, Rock Bite and Ghost Bite. They're essentially the same card, but Ghost Bite is better. Um, because if something's just a little too big, you can potentially weaken it and then swing over it with a bigger creature. Now let's talk about Ravenous Web Lake here for a minute. I can't speak about the world at large, but Ravenous Webleg has been really popular in Kalima decks locally because it's a really big blocker. Odds are whatever it blocks is going to die. Now it's got kind of a, uh, a Stingwing thing going on. Once it blocks, it's dead too. But then it also has its other ability. When it dies, your opponent has to banish another of their creatures. So you've got this big imposing blocker that unless you return it to their hand, no matter what's happening, it's going to kill another creature. So it's a great way to slow down aggressive decks. So the fact that one of these comes in the deck is really good for any new player, especially if they want to build, a, like, grow towards a Kalima build. Cryptic Worm, he's big. Really not much else to say about him. If they were to pick the best dual sieve from that color combination for this deck, it would probably have to be either... I would say Grip of Despair or <coughs> Freakish Test Subject. Now, I can totally understand Freakish over Grip because Freakish is a, either a common or uncommon and Grip is a rare. And the only rares in this deck are one of in King Barnacle and Ravenous Web Lake. So, um, that's it for the Water deck. Now we're moving on to the Darkness deck. Here we have the Darkness deck. And as you can probably see looking at the top here, um... A lot of the same colors for darkness as there were in the water deck. Now it seems to me, just from looking at the last few decks, that um, they probably do a kind of a feature area where there's certain cards that are just uniform across decks. And I think the rares are uniform across deck too, because again we also have a ravenous web leg, which is again a really good card. We got Cave Gulper, Dagger Doll, Dread Husk, Fanged Horror, Ghost Bite. Ghost Bite's good. Um, we got Skeleton Soldier now and Spectral Mummy, both of which are blockers. We also got Wandering Brain Eater, which is a blocker. And we've got Assault Dragon for fire. That's our rare, one of. Three Blast Forge Scrapper, three Chaotic Sky Terror, three Drill Storm. Now, some people have been swearing by Drill Storm. I haven't seen it do a whole lot of crazy things, but it's not a terrible spell, so to each their own. Um, two Red Scale Dragon. Three Toolbot, and for our dual sieve, we have three Haunted Mech. Now, let's see here. Um, the Darkness section we pretty much already talked about, though. Well, let's talk about these three guys here, because they are all blockers. They each have some sort of drawback. Um, Spectral Mummy does not have a guard keyword like the other two. But whenever he attacks, he has to be banished after the attack. Um, Skeleton Soldier. Um, I believe. No, I'm thinking of something else. Um, I'm thinking of Wandering Brain Eater, but back to him in a minute. Um, Skeleton Soldier 
one for two. When he wins a battle, he's banished. And at that low power, if he loses a battle, naturally he's banished. Wandering Brain Eaters are a lot bigger, two for four. But when he first enters play, he enters play tap. That's what Shambling does. He's a little slow. Um, New York Fire Section, Assault Dragon, reasonably cheap, reasonably big. For this kind of deck, it's not that bad. Um, Blast Forge Scrapper, I must just say, 3 for 3 vanilla. Chaotic Sky Terror, he, he does better against blockers, but... Drill Storm is the Shield Blast. And I'm glad it's got the Red Scale Draken in it, because Red Scale Draken has that keyword Fast Attack, which is great for teaching new players about the benefits of the Fire Civilization, because Fast Attack is pretty much one of their exclusive things. Toolbot, vanilla 2 for 2, and let's get to Haunted Mech, 4 for 5. Vanilla, not much to say about him. So, that is the Darkness deck, guys. We're next, we're going to cover... Next, we're going to cover the Fire deck. Alright, so here we have the Fire deck, leading off strong with an Assault Dragon. That's the card on the box. One of, that's the rare. It also was the Fire rare in the Darkness uh, deck. We got Chaotic Sky Terror, Drill Storm... Red Scale Draken, those were all in the fought in the the dark deck. Here we also have Draken Upstart, four for four vanilla. We've got Sledgehammer Slammer, four for three power attack plus two. And we've got Sky Talon Harrier, four for three. I don't know what he does. I know. And then we got Manic Mechanic. And I say Manic Mechanic for last because he has the protector keyword, and that's important because um, protector is a new thing, and if pl players should learn about it, even though it's not really relevant in the meta at this time, people should still learn about it. There's only two protectors in this deck. I don't think any of the nature cards have protector, so there's that. Um, we also are introduced to the power attack keyword, which is usually a fire card. Both Red Scale Draken and Sledgehammer Slammer have that power attack. Forgot to mention Red Scale Draken in the Darkness deck having power attack, but it's there. <coughs> Toolbot, same as before. Now in the nature section we've got Jackalax, Monstrify, Reinforce, Saber Mantis, Shaman Broccoli, Striding Hearthwood, and Weaponized Razor Cat down there at the bottom. Now, let's talk about Razor Cat real quick. Of all the dual sieve combinations, I think this one got the best dual sieve. Because he's just a straight 2 for 4, beat stick, no drawback. In the days of Duel Masters, that was a really insane card. And here, he's a really aggressive card that most of these other decks can't deal with if he does come out on that second turn. So, he's actually pretty good when it comes to these pre-constructed demo decks. Um, Reinforce is a really good Shield Blast. There's a lot of nature decks that run it. Um, especially those that aren't running water cards to help them draw. They run Reinforce. I've ran Reinforce on occasion. Saber Mantis. He's funny because he's on the cover for the for the Nature deck. But he's here as well as a 3-up. Shaman Broccoli. Um, he gets additional power. So that's kind of an introduction to that thing. we got Monstrify that teaches you that too. Striding Hearthwood is the rare for Nature. Not particularly good. Assault Dragon's okay. He's kind of in the same vein as Weaponized Razor Cat. Cheap, but big. Or reasonably cheap, but big. Um, not much more to say about this one. We got Drill Storm again, which showed up in the Darkness deck. It seems like every deck has six Shield Blasts. Usually two three ofs, one from each civilization. So, we're going to go right on to the Nature deck. And now, finally, we are here at the Nature deck. Starting off with Deepwood Druid, Jarbala Keeper, Lumbering Elderwood, two Nurturing Hive, three Reinforce. Saber Mantis, again, as a 3 of 3 Shaman Broccoli, 3 Shardhide Tusker, the rare Striding Hearthwood. In the light section, we have 3 Halo Hawk, 3 Heliosphere, 2 Rain Cloud Kraken, 3 Repulse, 2 Shimmer Wing, 1 Sunwhip Sentry, the rare for light. And then at the bottom there, we've got 3 Full Metal Lemon. So let's talk about the nature real quick. we got certain cards that are carrying over from the Fire deck. We've got the 3 Reinforce, 3 Saber Mantis, 3 Shaman Broccoli, Striding Hearthwood being the rare. Um, we got a lot of new stuff here, though. We got the Shardhide Tusker with power attack. So, again, that power attack keyword. Make sure you expose the players to as many new things as possible. Um, we got Nurturing Hive. Reduces the cost of creatures. 
That's actually relevant because the deck runs two lumbering elder wood. Seven for seven, double breaker. Not good in standard play, but if you're looking at just a showdown between these two decks, he's a real danger once he comes out because there's I don't think there's any other card that gets that big in these decks. I can't think of one. I can't think of one. I don't think they do. Drabala Keeper, 4 for 4 Vanilla. Deepwood Druid, um, charge mana from the top of the deck. So that's introducing players to the nature, to nature's mechanic of building mana. Full Metal Lemon does the same thing, but we'll get to him in a minute. Light Section, we got a lot of uh, cards coming back here. Actually, the Light Section for this is pretty small compared to other decks. It's not quite a 50-50 split. We got Halo Hawk, Heliosphere, Rain Cloud, Crack, and Repulse. Those are all... We've come full circle. Those cards were all in the light deck. Then, of course, you've got the light rare Sunweb Sentry. I think at this point we've learned that the decks shared rares. Each civilization had a very specific rare that was in each deck. Um, full Metal Lemon. Good blocker. Charges mana when he dies. Good size. Um, he's been re fairly relevant recently. He's good in the pile. He's good in... He's good in the pile. He's good in um, Hive Queen decks. So, also the fact too that considering that Full Metal Lemon is actually the holographic rare promo card coming out of the KMCs this season, it seems to me that Wizards wants us to use him for something. So. So, yeah, going back to light for a second, the only card that's unique to light is Shimmerwing. Two for one, when he's banished, tap a card. So, that's a little bit of... I don't think we actually saw that anywhere else. I think this is probably the only card that demonstrates... Well, no, we got Repulse. But it's the only other card that demonstrates light's ability to tap creatures. Um, this was, if you may recall, this was the deck that Taylor used in uh, my previous video. So that's it for the nature deck, guys. So that's the 2014 new demo decks, guys. I hope you enjoyed those. Um, final thoughts. They have a good selection of abilities throughout them. I think that um, you got the protector in the fire deck. You've got the power attack in the fire nature. You've got blocker. You've got skirmisher. Even this, even this deck. Or was it this deck? Yes, it was this deck. Even this deck had skirmisher in it because it had jackalax. Um, you've got a lot of keywords that are covered, a lot of the essential ones, shield blast, blocker, double breaker, um, spells, it had, each deck had spells, um, I don't know if all of them had non-shield blast spells, but a few of them did. Um, the decks had certain key cards, like, throughout them that, uh, appeared in every deck of that color, um, and every color had its rare that appeared in both decks that had that color. Um, I think this was meant to be a primer to dual sieves, to like kind of introduce players to dual sieves because that was a very new mechanic that came along following uh, intro with the introduction of the Clash block. Um, I'm a little disappointed that each deck only had one dual sieve card in it and in case of the dark light and water decks uh, the dual sieve card was kind of lackluster it really didn't help players see what was so interesting about dual sieve cards they were slightly bigger but they were just the four for five vanillas in the case of water and dark and they were um, in the case of light it wasn't even worth anything it was memory keeper 2 for 2500 compared to uh, Braun, uh, Sabertooth, which, not Sabertooth, Razor well, Cat, Razor Cat, Weaponized Razor Cat, which is two for four. So, the dual sieves were a little lackluster. Um, I wish there were more of them to really help play, new players see the benefit of having a dual sieve card in the deck. Especially since these are du dual sieve decks and not three sieve decks. Um, odds are you're not going to get that first turn charge dual sieve. And by the time it comes along, you don't really see the benefit of a first turn charge dual sieve because you're like, oh, I already got these colors. What do I need to charge it for? Um, so yeah, I wish there were more dual sieves in it. I wish the dual sieves were more interesting. Um, I kind of understand why they did like certain cards that were relevant throughout each deck. 
um, because you don't really want the player to feel like they got gypped. It's like, oh, I got this deck. This other deck is so much better. But in the end, I think you're still going to kind of get that. For example, um, the Darkness Rare, uh, Ravenous Webleg, really good card, really relevant to the meta at the, at the moment, in my opinion. Um, so if you want Ravenous Webleg, you want to get one of these two, because he's in both of these. Um, I can't think of any other cards that are particularly relevant. If you want to play Pile, this one's really good. It has Reinforce. It has um, Full Metal Lemon. Full Metal Lemon's a big deal. Um, so when it comes down to it, I think either this one or this one are probably the best decks right now. Of these five, I think these two might be the best. Um, one thing I have to say that I'm really disappointed in is that I understood why the old demo decks did not have evolutions in them because they were released before evolutions were. They were released during the during Rise of the Duel Masters. Evo Fury came out afterward, so it made sense that there were no evolutions in them. Evolutions are now a big deal. Hive Queen is a big deal at least, and Hydra Medusa is starting to see a return. There are evolutions is a mechanic in the game even if it's not used by a lot of the big decks right now it is a mechanic in the game and it should be explained none of these decks had evolutions in them so that's my big complaint I feel like if you're going to teach a new player these decks do cover a lot but they don't cover evolutions and evolutions are very important Sabretooth is still a big deal some people still run uh, some people run Shaman of the Vigil Hive Queen is its own deck so that's a thing um, altogether though, um, uh, I did notice, at, f at first I thought these decks might not run anything, might run some things that were pre-clash, in which case I was wondering what would happen when the rotation happened, but when I looked at these decks just now, um, all these cards are clash or past that, so if you're looking for any pre-clash cards, picking up a demo deck's not going to work for you, but... It is good for a new player trying to get into the game. They don't find they don't pick up a forty card demo deck, and then come may realize that they can't use the deck because some of those cards are no longer playable, and now the deck's not legal. Now all of these cards are clash and beyond, so that's good. So final verdict on these: these two probably the best. Good coverage of uh, learning material. I like the box art. I like that it tells you now what sibs come in the box. They're very informative. It's got the little entry thing. It's got the little thing with the list of... The bird agrees! It's got the list of power cards in the format, so at least the players aren't going in completely blind. They know what to go looking for. It tells them what, sit, what uh, set they come from, so they know what packs to buy. Um, so yeah, those are the demo decks, guys. I give them two thumbs up. Well, one and a half thumbs up. I still think they needed evolutions. So, like and favorite if you enjoyed, subscribe, um, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.